Life. And I'm Deontay B. And welcome to Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. Hey, lady. Hey, girl. So we're talking about television and film today. You're excited? I know you love TV and film. You know I do. And I mean, when you think about television and film, like, I have so many shows. Like, what's your favorite? You know, my all-time favorite is The Five Heartbeats. You love The Five Heartbeats. You know I love The Five Heartbeats. And what else? And loving basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I already knew. So, I mean, today's guests, I mean, they are just through the roof. Like, when you talk about television and film, I mean, tell them who we have. So, we have Mr. John Estrada. He's a writer and a filmmaker, and he's brought along his actor in his new film, Mr. McDaniel Austin. And who else we got on the show? We have D.K. Bachi. Mm -hmm. He is an entrepreneur brand ambassador and he's also been on seen on television shows like love and hip-hop atlanta yeah, we love that one yeah so i can't wait to hear what else he has to say and i mean we have one more guest who else do we have girl power we have mrs kiana dancy she is an entrepreneur a comedian and she just started a new franchise so i can't wait to see what she has to say yes because she's also a former co-host of sister her circle right yes she is so i mean she's she does, she does what we do. So I can't wait to see that from another perspective. That's going to be so awesome. I mean, like we just said, we're talking everything television and film. This is Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. You better stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Today we're talking about everything film and television. And our first guest is John Estrada and actor McDaniel Austin. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you for you. coming down to the corner. So yes. we like to jump right into it. Sure. So, John, you have a film called White Rose. Yes. And the focus of the film is sex trafficking, which is very interesting. Yes. So what was your in inspiration and why did you think that issue was important to bring to life? Well, a couple of years ago, I worked with uh, a lady who she told me about uh, a ministry that she went uh, a part. They went to Fulton Industrial Boulevard and they used to pass out white roses to a lot of the uh, the, uh, the prostitutes there. And mm. she told me more about it. So it piqued my interest. And so one thing uh, I, I had written uh, inspirational for, um, play, excuse me. Uh, about domestic violence uh, and so it got me to thinking so I started uh, writing a film how can we incorporate it being that Atlanta is the number one sex trafficking market in the world and so with once she told me that I started just gathering ideas learning more about it and eventually this is where it eventually started as a play but then it evolved into a short film Wow, wow. so McDaniel Austin mm -hmm. You play one of the lead characters in the film. That's right. So That's right. tell us a little bit about how you got casted for the role and a little bit about this interesting character that you're playing. Well, uh, the uh, the role was up for grabs. Um, you had to audition for it. And um, and it just looked like an interesting role. Okay. And uh, so I went and auditioned for it um, with uh, John Estrada as well as Cade Hill. and. Okay. Uh, you know, as soon as I saw some of the pieces of the script, it was like, wow, you know, this is deep. Right. And, um, and that's how it happened. You know, uh, I was lucky enough to get picked uh, to be, you know, to play the role I'm playing. And that's just how we got started. So what's a snippet of this character? Because I know you told mm -hmm. us a little bit, but you said, yeah. I mean, you said some interesting things about your character. Yeah, this is a, mm -hmm. this is a dark, dark character. We're talking wow. about, you know, the evil character. This is the husband of a, a husband-wife team that, you know, this is what they do. They're child traffickers, um, but they have this business-like um, demeanor. So if you were to see them on the street, you really wouldn't know mm. what was going on. But they have an evil streak, and they really are involved. Mm. They're, they're knee-deep in, in the game, so to speak. 
So, John, what were some of the stuff that you took to get your material um, discovered on a larger scale? Um, so, the way it happened was, I, in 2015, I did a play, as I mentioned, called uh, Inside Out, Domestic Violence, uh, um, The Untold Truth of Domestic Violence in the Church. And so, once I did that, I started to, I started to write White Rose, and from there, it's networking and just partnering with people and the way it all worked out I worked with Kade she and I worked and we had a mutual friend who um, you know Kade was in the film industry and uh, I was doing plays and so our, our mutual friend told us that we should work with one another and because we have kindred spirits and so I was just like okay so couple, fast forward a couple years later we both working in different places and uh, one day in prayer, I just, the Lord just told me, hey, reach out to Kade to do this as a short film instead of a play. So you think that, you know, when someone is developing films, especially starting out, that they should possibly work with, you know, like-minded people right. and network with others, like, yeah. like a mentor sort of. Right. Absolutely. I think what happens is that if you can find somebody that that you guys, uh, as you mentioned, like-minded, someone that that shares your vision, it makes things a lot easier. Because the thing is, if if you don't share the same vision, then what happens is that it, there will be a lot of clashing, and it doesn't help the production to to be completed. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So my question would be for both of you, because you're you. As, I'm going to take both of you back. I want to take you back to when you first became a writer and you back to when you first got that first role as an actor. What were some of the challenges that you faced as a writer and some of the challenges that you faced as an actor? Because I think it would be important for some of our viewers to know that those beginning stages, people think they can just jump right in and do right. it, but it's not that simple. So, I think for me it's just learning. Um, and. Not necessarily if there's one right way to do it. There are more. There are different uh, avenues to go. But the thing is, it's just putting your creativity in there. Be creative. You know, think outside the box. I think for me, it was just um, I like to write conversational pieces, just like we're doing here. That's how I like to to do it. But other people have other forms of of writing but for me this is the way I, I like to and I think it's always learning getting around people that that know more than you so that way you can grow and develop as a writer or e anything you may be doing in your craft right yeah um, I, w I would say that there is that too there's the learning part of it and uh, there's the work you definitely right. have to work um, it's not it's a lot more than just memorizing your lines um, you know, you really have to work at your craft, just like any art that you do. And so it's more than just, just memorizing lines. I had to go and, you know, take the classes right. and, and have the right, you know, have the right acting teacher who can, you know, teach you not just techniques and things like that, but just how to, to uh, pull out something real from yourself. And uh, so it's just, you know, getting into the work, being willing to roll your sleeves up. And, and work. Right, exactly. Okay, well, I want people to be able to watch this film because I think that um, sex trafficking, human trafficking is very, very, very important in our society and it goes on, you know, a lot of people that is not aware of how it actually happens. So, can you tell viewers how can they get or watch the film or where it will be um, showing it and also tell the viewers how they can find each one of you? Well, we had uh, we had our premiere on September 18th. We had um, uh, it was a success. We had a lot of people there, and uh, right now we are in the midst of of getting it uh, into uh, viewers' hands. Just okay. looking for a different platform. But if you um, you can always reach out to uh, myself at uh, I'm on Instagram at Two Fish Five Loaves E N T, um, and I'm on Facebook at Two Fish Five Loaves E N T and we'll have more information there uh, about the film. Okay. Yeah, um, you can uh, find me at, uh, on IMDB, of course, McDaniel Austin. McDaniel's my first name. <laughs> uh, and also Instagram, Mackie Austin, M-A-C-K-Y-A-U-S-T-I-N, Mackie Austin. Go ahead and, uh, and, and catch me on there. I definitely follow you back. All right, now well, thank all right. you all. Yeah. 
Well, there you have it. We are talking everything television and film, and you need to stay tuned because coming up next, we have Kay Bocci. He is not only an entrepreneur, but he'll tell you how he took television and became a brand ambassador. This is Gwen's mm -hmm. Business Corner with Deontay B. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And you can watch Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay V every first and third Monday on Fox 54. I am Deontay V. Welcome back. So if you're just tuning in, we are talking everything television and film. And we have today's guest, the Mr. K. Bocci. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the corner. Absolutely. So you have quite the phrase, I host you party, because yes. you're a promoter, you've been a promoter for a long time, so tell us a little bit about that brand and how you got started in promoting. So I kind of got my start in promotions um, in high school really, but I didn't take it seriously until like college. Um, for me it was a way to be creative, uh, and I guess I kind of just like got that entrepreneurial spirit um, from my parents, and you know, I just, I needed a way to kind of create a business or more or less create money for myself. Being a broke college kid, <laughs> you gotta find a way to make it happen. So I knew kind of at an early age what I was good at, bringing people together and being creative. So being, you know, being in promotion just was kind of like a natural thing for me. So you are the, par the party man. <laughs> like you are the go-to person for parties. Yeah. Yeah. Hold up. <laughs> right. So tell us how, because I mean, I know you said it started that way, but right. we know, I mean, Gwen keep asking you to pass the conversier for right. a reason. So <laughs> tell us how you went from, how that landed you the opportunity yeah. to, to go from, like you said, being someone in college, right. making money, to becoming a brand ambassador for Cavassier. Um, Well, what I figured out was it wasn't so much just, you know, doing parties. It was more so the work that you put into it in terms of like promotion. Um, I got my degree in public relations, so okay. in college, that kind of came natural for me in majoring in that because, you know, I was already doing parties and promotion, but it really kind of had the wheels turning in terms of learning how to market, um, advertise, and, you know, along with promotion. So in doing that and being in the party atmosphere, you meet so many different kinds of people, like, right. regardless if you just broke up with a boyfriend, just got a promotion, you're about to get married, people are always going to need a reason to party and celebrate. So once I figured that out, I kind of, you know, um, started creating different ways to just brand, period. Right. Um, I would get people that, you know, would come to my events and say, hey, I'm working with this company or this brand, you know, how can we get notoriety or visibility in your events? So, you know, once the light bulb kind of went off, like, you know what, it could just be bigger than, you know, just doing parties and going to the club every weekend. Um, so... Once I kind of figured that part out, I would get invited to, you know, different events that were, weren't necessarily club related, but because I had a strong following, people would want me to come out. They know, hey, if Bachi's here, he's going to bring a crowd, this, that, and the third. So I started hosting some different events um, outside of, you know, the norm. Um, I hosted an event for Martell about a year or so ago, okay. and I met some of the right people at that event, and that kind of developed into a partnership with Cavarsia. So, you know, a year later, I'm the official brand ambassador for Cavarsi in Atlanta. I, I got it. Building yeah. relationships absolutely. turned you into a real businessman. Right, absolutely. Real entrepreneur. <laughs> That's real ball stuff. Right. Yep. So you don't just promote parties. You have, you know, you're known as an influencer, mm -hmm. especially in the social media world. Right. And you have also had the opportunity to be on um, Love and Help Pop Atlanta, right. and you also is a regular personality. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the steps that you took to maneuver from being a club promoter to building yourself as an influencer and as somebody? Um, understanding how to brand yourself. Um, you know, in, in Atlanta, the nightlife industry is a really big industry, but I feel like a lot of people don't take the opportunity to brand themselves. They're always branding the next party or that event. But for me, it's like, hey, if I'm doing my due diligence to bring people out, I need people to fall in love with me as the person. And doing that, that's how you tend to develop and build your brand. Um, in terms of Love & Hip Hop, they were looking for new people. Um, and I'm from Atlanta, so they wanted somebody who was all, you know, authentic. I don't do music, but promotions and nightlife, they kind of go hand in hand. Right, right. Um, I knew a lot of people on the show because I had booked them for different, you know, various events and they parted me on a regular basis. So um, it was kind of like a natural fit. Amazing, amazing. 
So let's go back because we talked about you being in college, right? You know, and being a promoter in college. So let's go back then because now we know you're an influencer. So we know eventually everybody started following you. Everybody, right. like you said, you became the go-to party person. Mm -hmm. But what were some of the challenges you faced when you were trying to get people to actually buy into your brand? You know, when you had that first party and you were yeah. trying to get people to actually come to the party. So for me, um, in college, I wasn't like into social media and it was, you know, relatively new. Um, I was just like, I'm not finna stand on my phone and just be talking to random people that I don't know. <laughs> um, I was in class with a, with a home girl of mine. She was like, no, you know, you should really get on Twitter to help, you know, boost your party and all. But I wasn't thinking like that. You know, in those days I was hand to hand. Right. I was going to the print shop, printing up flyers, passing them out with no shame, putting them on cards, just whatever. But at that time, I wasn't really branding myself. I was just branding the experience. Right. So, you know, some of the challenges in that is like, if you don't know the person that's doing the party, the best thing to do is just fall in love with the event. So um, I would theme a lot of my events and people came to know me through the events that I was doing because I was theming them. So rather than just say, hey, I'm just going to do this weekly thing at this club, it's like, no, you know, I may do like a party once a month and it was big turnout. And from that point, it was like, okay, now you have to, try to understand like how to develop that into branding yourself. Um, and also just having self-confidence because you'll do some great parties, but you have to take the good with the bad. And when you're in college, like every dollar counts. So if I made thousand dollars, 1500, just one event, I made a couple hundred. It's like, oh man, do I really want to keep doing this? You know, when it's time for me to graduate, you just might not be considered a real job. What do I want to do? But you know, I fell in love with what it was that I was doing. It's, it's been great for me. Wow. Strategic, you were strategic though. Right. right. So, Absolutely. you know, people don't think about it. I think that's what set, set you aside from other right. party planners mm -hmm. is that the fact that you just, what you just said, you actually took the time to make it themed and, you know, things like that, that, that right. extra step that people right. forget. Yeah, See? just, you know, understanding your craft and just taking it seriously. Like, even in any line of business, people are only going to take it as serious as you take it. So, if you treat it like a career, if you treat it, you know, with, with love and, and put your passion into it, then It'll manifest in what it's supposed to be. So you you taking it up a step, you kicked it up a notch. Right. So now you seek to build self worth and empower, mm -hmm. like this shirt that I love that says "Black women are really everything." Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. why do you feel that that's so important in the community, and how do you provide these tools? Uh, I just I, I think it's a necessary step to have self worth and understand, you know, that you. It sounds cliche, but that you are somebody, you are important. Um, especially within our culture, I feel like a lot of people are lost. You know, we probably didn't have the same upbringing as other ethnicity groups. So, you know, at this point with social media being like a big thing, it's important to put a positive message into everything that you do. So, um, when we do these community cleanups, um, I think back to like when I played ball in high school, my coach would always say, if you dress the part, you dress good, you feel good, you play good. And it's the same thing in your neighborhoods. We truly believe in giving back to our community. Yeah. Absolutely. So tell the viewers, how can they find you and get to one of your parties? <laughs> um, you can follow me on Instagram. All my social media handles are the same. That's Kbochi. That's K-B-O-T-C-H-E-Y. Um, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Follow me where the party is. All right, thank you so thank much you for coming to the condo. Yes, that's Kabasia. Kabasia. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Kay Bocci was talking with us about everything television. I mean, he took it up a notch. Brand ambassador, empowerment. You better stay tuned and keep it locked. This is Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. We got to take a break, but we will definitely be right back. Hi, I'm Deontay B. of Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. And you can catch us every first and third Monday on Fox 54. If you would like to be a show guest, contact us on Facebook at Gwen's Business Corner or you can email us at GwenBusinessCorner at gmail.com. Welcome back. So if you are just tuning in, we are talking everything television and film. And our next guest is the Miss Kiana Dancy. Welcome, Kiana. Thank you, girl. You better have my title right. <laughs> hey, girl. What's up? How y'all doing? Okay. Good. So, hey, honey. Hey. Welcome to the corner. Thank you so much. The corner. That sounds like I'm a, well, you know, welcome to the corner. <laughs> I, I'm in your corners, ladies. I ain't got nothing to sell on this corner. Oh, <laughs> no. Y'all look bossed up. Okay. Somebody should have told me to put on the dress. You look, you look fabulous. 
Well, Amazing. Thank you. thank you. So let's get started. Okay. So we already know you're a comedian, right? I am. All right. And an actress, media personality, an entrepreneur. You have so many titles. So tell us, what's your inspiration for being, I call it a boss? Wow, that's a heavy question because there, is, there are a lot of titles to me. I'm not only a comedian, a media, media personality, an actress, a, all those things, but I'm also a real estate agent. I'm a mm -hmm. franchise owner. I have a lot of things going. And so um, my, my inspiration is really to just eat. You know what I mean? I want right. to be able to take care of my family. Now, I keep saying that because I have a family, but I don't have children. You know what I'm saying? My ultimate goal in life has always been to retire my mama. Like, it irritates me that my mother got to get up every day and work for somebody else. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I am my brother. If he doesn't want to go work for somebody else, I would like to not have to have him do that. Now, of course, he's a young man. He wants to make his own, and I respect that. But if he doesn't want to go out there and work for them people, guess what? Here's an opportunity to do it. So, um, I actually have been... Um, Grinding for a very long time. I came out of corporate America in 2009. I used to work for Samsung Telecommunications. Okay. And as a, I was a regional director for Samsung. And what I did with them is I managed the tariff, the market. Houston was the fourth largest market in the country. Um, fourth largest city also. Mm -hmm. And my job was to make sure that when people thought about cell phones, they thought about Samsung telecommunications. Like, I'm a droid girl. Most of these people in this room, I'm sure, no, are iPhone girls. No, ma'am, I'm a droid <laughs> right. girl. Thank you. So, uh, hello, sis. Thank you for keeping us in business. I well, keeping them in business. Right. So, <laughs> so once I, and I, and I brought that up to say, I got laid off in 2009. Um, yeah. They cut 15% of the team, and I was part of that 15%. And mm. I always vowed to myself, I would never put myself in a situation again where mm. someone will, can determine whether or not I eat. Right. So, when I got laid off from my job, that meant that immediately, even though they gave me a pack, but immediately my lifestyle changed you know what I'm saying I had to start being more conscious about how I spent my money how and when I spent my money and you know can if because I eat out every day so right. ooh, well, today I ain't gonna be able to eat out I gotta <laughs> eat at home that's a problem that's yeah. altering my lifestyle so you know I put myself in a position to win so I um, at that time I had already had my real estate license because I got my license so that I can sell myself my home that when I realized how much that commission was going to be, I'm like, wait a minute, who gonna get that commission? And it would have been the buyer's agent, which would have been me, who would the lady would took or a man took me to look at for the house. They wrote the check, well, wrote the contract, and then the check goes to them. Wait a minute, I can do this myself. So I sold, I got my my license, and I sold my house to myself. So that commission went into my account. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So. And, you know, all those things and all of my inspirations and all my motivations have been based on me not having to rely on anybody else to be comfortable in my life. And one thing I learned is I'm not very, I'm not comfortable being uncomfortable. But uncomfortable, being uncomfortable, ooh, baby, it may, it's, that's a motivation to keep pushing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very, that's very boss. Well, thank you, sis. That's very boss. <laughs> Think about it that way. Let me just go get this license. I'm gonna sell my own right. house you to myself. Do what you do. Yeah, right. yeah, I like it. So, what are some of the biggest challenges you face? Because you're a comedian, mm -hmm. and I know with comedians you have to keep up on everything. I mean, you have to keep up on politics, like pretty much everything that's going on around. So, what are some of the challenges that you face starting out as a comedian? Okay, first of all, I'm horrible with that. I don't watch social media as much as I should. I don't watch reality television. I am terrible. Like, I still have a whole, y'all gonna judge me, I have a whole movie list, a black movie list that I yeah. need to get to. I, I haven't seen Friday too, just because I just hadn't. You know, no. I saw one, and then I was like, okay, well, one was enough, child. How much more, you know? So, I know there's a whole list of movies. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, right. kind of very busy. I barely watch the movies that I'm in. You know what I mean? It takes me a while to get to watch. Like, I just saw Sex Tuplets, because I did that on oh. Netflix um, just recently, and I just watched it, and it's been mm -hmm. out for about a month, maybe? Um, okay. I would tell you, to answer your question specifically, you're right. There are a lot of things that I have to stay on top of. Politics, you know, pop culture, all those different things. I stay in my lane, meaning okay. what I'm most comfortable with. I talk, when you come to my show, you're going to see me talk about me. I know okay. me. You know yeah. what I mean? But I don't know anybody else as much as I know me. I, I try to apply whatever I'm going through to make it relatable to those who are in the audience. And then also maybe what's going on in the world right now. Um, for example, the people's president, because he ain't mine, the people's president <laughs> is um, trying to build his border wall. Yeah. And he's also, you know, he didn't got to the point, he didn't ran all the Mexicans off. Now listen, let me tell you something. You, what, what has the world come to when you can't go to the Home Depot, to the Walmart to find you a good Mexican? That's where the right. workforce at, you know what I'm saying? I need things done at my house and I can't go down to the Home Depot and get me a Mexican. <laughs> I'm not saying they sell them on the shelf, but they be there ready to be popped. You know what I mean? Right. So I, there are things that, I mean, I do have, to, I correlate those situations to my life because okay. I, you know, 
those are things that are affecting me. You know, um, some of the things that affected me specifically in the beginning of my career was um, I was young. And then for lack of better words, being attractive can kind of work against you in the right. comedy game. People feel like as a female comedian, you can't be attractive, you can't be pretty. And I noticed that many people will say, if you notice, my hashtag is pretty funny chick. And that has nothing to do with the way I look. It's the way people describe my comedy. So people will come to my show and say, oh my God, oh my God, you're you you pretty funny. And it wasn't mm. about how I looked. It was just the word that they used to describe my talent. Right. So then I, and then they'll say, and I ain't never seen a comedian like you, legs, lips, eyes, bam, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. it was one of those things. I was So I, it was a word play. It was a play on words for me that I actually used that. Um, it does help to be attractive, but it definitely can work against you. I would never forget, there's a young lady, and I, one of my girlfriends actually, very funny young lady. Her name is Ida Rodriguez. She's from LA. And she did Last Comic Standing. And I think it was Keenan Wayans who actually said, I'm distracted by your beauty. Wow. Couldn't focus on the fact that she was very funny. Right. That sister is a beast. You hear me? Right. But he kept saying, I'm distracted by your beauty. And that bothered me so much that, you know, in this male dominated industry, the only thing that you could see, even though she's toe to toe with the men that's standing on stage with her, that she was attractive. She's supposed to be attractive. She came from attractive people right. and she put herself together, you know, but that really disturbed me. And um, so I had to kind of fight that. And then in addition to um, being a boys club, you always have to fight the fact that there's never more than one female on a show. You will see one female, but you're not gonna see one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. And if there's, if you see an all female show, it'll be all females and you know maybe a male host. But they won't just let us have more than one female comedian on the show. So that is something else that I've been very diligent about fighting. So girl, you gave us so much insight in such a short time. We got to bring you back. We got that. to bring you back. Yes. Until then, tell the viewers how they can get in contact with you. So you can find me on all things social at Kiana Dancy. That's K-I-A-N-A-D-A-N-C-I-E. That's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. My website is also KianaDancy.com. And also I'm at the Atlanta Comedy Theater Monday. Well, not Monday, actually Friday and Saturday. So I'm there when I'm in town, honey, when the people don't go get the bag out of town, <laughs> I am there. So come, come see me and also follow me. Okay, now, and you can follow me, y'all, you know, at Gwinnett's her right on all social media outlets. Now, make sure you follow us at Gwen Business Corner on all social media outlets as well. Do you tell them how to find you, girl? Well, you know, you can find me at the Real Deontay B at all social media outlets. And, I mean, thank you, Kiana. You were just the real social butterfly, but yes. you took it. I mean, you gave them business. You just gave them, I mean, you just yep. awesome. Thank right. you. I appreciate so, that. So, we just appreciate you coming to the corner. And, I mean, we got to get out of here. We do not want to, but you know we will be back <laughs> so you know you can catch us every first and third monday on fox 54 bye for now bye, -bye.